If you like the video make sure to like, comment, and subscribe for more videos like this. What is your reaction when you caught your GF or BF or wife or husband? Well, I didn't catch my ex-wife of 3 years cheating, she admitted to it because the guy was going to blackmail her. We all worked together. He was one of our managers. I had no idea. I worked with him and her almost every day and he never said a word to me. It had been going on for like 3 months, and in the process of finding this out, I also learned that he wasn't the only one. That mutual friend of ours that slept on our couch a few times a month. Yeah. It did not go well. I've never been so angry in my life. I was typically a pretty reserved individual, but when she told me this stuff at 2.30 in the morning, I was. Not that. I didn't break anything, but you can be sure I yelled. I kicked her out of our apartment, and took a lift to the restaurant we worked at to confront the guy, and do what? I don't know. I wasn't exactly thinking straight. Fight the guy. Maybe. I hadn't been in a physical fight since I was 14, so who knows how that would have gone, only to be told he'd called out that day, and that the other managers or two of them at least knew because my ex was asking for their advice in the office on the situation. I took the week off from work, moved my stuff out of our apartment and we began the long, awful process of separating pretty much immediately. As soon as she came home the next day I told her we were about as done as we could be. I didn't realize that this process would take months. I ended up for the next year and a half in kind of a haze of depression, anger and resentment that was aided in no small part by a little bit too much alcohol, I felt like everything had just collapsed, so suddenly. I didn't know how to deal. I felt alone. We'd gotten married young, in our early 20s, and after only a year and a half of dating. During this time, my decision-making faculties weren't the best, which I realized was probably because I hadn't properly dealt with my own mental issues, serious OCD and depression, and they were coming to the forefront. But, I'm doing a lot better now, thanks to my family and friends who were there for me when I was brought low. I've since come to terms with those things, and I'm back to basically my regular drinking schedule of a single beer after work on the patio to unwind. Anything more sounds unappealing to me, unless I'm off work. I'm currently with a fantastic woman who's just the coolest and who doesn't quite get how in love I am with her. Not yet, at least. I'm dedicated entirely to my screenwriting career, and people actually like my stuff. That's insane to me. I also, for my part, had a lot of fun during these wild years, so it wasn't all bad by any means. For the ex's part, a lot of our situation was fueled by her frankly bad mental health. I won't go into too many details, but I also won't put it lightly because I was there and I went through the shit with her, our entire marriage we struggled with, on her end because I had my things going on too, a few particularly big problems she had going on upstairs, but in the last 6 months she really, really wasn't doing too well, and she just refused to get any help for herself. I tried literally everything. What I didn't realize was that she honestly didn't really have a working sense of empathy, at the time. I knew she had a problem with disassociation but I didn't realize it was happening in long spurts every day. She wouldn't talk about it. And. Other stuff. Sex was one of her coping mechanisms for when things got rough. I was young and stupid and didn't realize that you can't cajole someone into getting help if they don't feel they need it, and that's on me. One day, about five months after we separated, she went on a pretty intense psychedelic trip with a friend and the floodgates kind of opened. She actually went and got help and committed to it, which surprised me because in my experience no one was more adamant about her disbelief in medication and therapy than her. I just sat back and watched from a distance. She's really turned her life around in a big way and became a great friend, in the two and a half years since all this happened, after, like me, some initial turbulence. So, as weird as it might sound, I'm really proud of her. She put in the work. I guess stuff worked out, ultimately. As a postscript, the manager in question was fired a few days later because apparently he told everyone in the office when he was making his statement that he and my ex-wife were madly in love, 
were eloping out of town and they couldn't stop him, which was news to her because she was, at this point, still trying to hedge her bets with me. He was promptly escorted out of the building by security after he started throwing things around during his tirade, which was, I'm sure, a pleasurable experience for them because everyone thought that guy was just the creepiest of creeps. He was one of those, I've got more guns than anyone, and the government is full of Satanists, and oh by the way how do you feel about the Holocaust, type dudes who'd follow women employees around and spy at them from around corners and stuff. Gross. No accounting for taste, I guess. Hey, something that is super relevant to me right now. D. I was with my wife for 14 years. In January, she started getting very friendly with a guy from work, including driving three hours away to see him and staying overnight. She told me they were just friends, and I believed her. Then she admitted to me that she had been taking birth control behind my back for the past six months, while all the time forcing me to use condoms. I started to suspect she was cheating, but when I asked her, she accused me of not trusting her and trying to control her body. As punishment, she went to see her friend three hours away. She told me she was going overnight, but ended up being gone for four days. When she got back I told her that it was fucked up and that I wasn't cool with how she was acting. She said she didn't cheat on me, lie, and that she would work on being a better wife. I told her if things didn't get better within the next few months, I was out. She stopped taking the BC due to an unrelated reason. After that, she admitted to some mutual friends of ours that she was fucking this dude. Our friends decided to stay out of it and nobody told me. I found out afterwards that she was seen taking plan B several times over the next few months. She was fucking this guy raw and making me use condoms. About three months after we had the fight about her going away, a bouquet of flowers showed up at the house. They were from the friend. I lost my shit and told her I wanted a separation because she was obviously cheating. She told me she wasn't cheating, she was just good friends with him but he wanted more and she had told him no, and now he was trying to win her over with flowers. She begged me not to leave, said she would stop associating with the dude and things would get better. I believed her and forgave her. On July 4th, she told me she was going to a barbecue at a girlfriend's house and that it was, girls only. I didn't believe her, and after she left I checked her phone's GPS location and found out she was at the dude's house he had recently moved locally. I called her out over text and drove over there. When I got there she was gone, but she admitted to me over the phone that she had been fucking him. I tried to confront the guy, but he was too scared to come outside. It ended up being his parents' house and his mom had to come out and get me to leave. I am 33. She is 31, and the dude she was with was 27. I hired a divorce attorney the next day, and we're currently going through a terrible separation. We have a 5-year-old son with cancer that she has never taken care of. She is trying to get custody of him. It's really fucking horrible. I had my suspicions about my wife. She started going out a lot with friends and drinking a lot. Though before this started, we each would go on separate trips with friends. No big deal. We have our lives and it's good to get away sometimes. You miss the other when they're away. Anyway, we had been married about 17 years at this point. She kinda became a groupie again and following this rock star to concerts and spent a lot of money on meat and greets, spending money on clothes. She started meeting other groupies at these concerts and they started going on these trips together. I stopped going with her early on because, been there and done that. I didn't need to see or hear the same tired old shitty songs. Anyhow, her groupie friend pushed her on to cheat. There was also her co-worker's husband. He convinced her to cheat and told her what to say to me. She was coming back from a work trip and said that since the flight was coming in late, that would it be okay to stay at a hotel at the airport because she felt it was safer. I said, sure baby. I'll be here with our son. That's when they first hooked up. By the way, his wife knew all about it as well. Turns out she is a dominatrix on the side. 
They have a very open marriage apparently. No big deal to them, but nobody felt that I should know about this. She had been going to his place almost weekly, telling me that he was going to fix her computer, or another time he was going to change out her guitar strings. Yay right. I was getting even more suspicious. She would always come home late and drunk. There I was, being the good dad, taking care of our son. She left in a rush one day and left her computer on. I jumped on it and started checking her chats. Yup. Found the proof I needed. She had a lesbian affair with one of her groupies, she was sexting with an old flame from high school, fucking her co-worker's husband, oh and also sexting another dude and eventually fucked him in our house. I was so pissed and angry at what I read. I called a lawyer friend and he told me to copy everything, so I did. As I continued reading this shit, I would get angrier and angrier at the shit she wrote. Her telling him, you just get me, you're a real man. Oh that shit killed me. Eventually I decided that I would confront her that evening. I made a really special dinner, with some nice wine. Sent our kid to spend the night at the lawyer's house. After dinner, I said we should talk. I told her I knew about everything and everyone. I had all of the proof I needed. She freaked out on me and started crying and saying how sorry she was. That her affair was over. I said I didn't care. You lied straight to my face. Who the fuck does that? Plus, she also fucked this guy without a condom. Who does that in this day and age? What, you needed to feel his load in you. I said, you don't care enough about yourself to protect yourself, and you put me and our son's health and safety at risk. I'm sure that delicious meal I prepare felt like shit in her stomach. I gave her a choice. All those people are gone from your life where I walk. You are getting tested. I want all your passwords and gave her all of mine. She complied to my requests. I now have access to her computer but don't ever check. It's been two years since all of this happened and we are still trying to rebuild this marriage. Sometimes I feel I should have left, but she is a great mother. We are more like roommates at this point. Will it ever get better? I don't know, but we are trying. It's really hard to see her as the same person I thought I knew. Maybe, I'm waiting until my son turns 18 to be free and really happy. Five more years, it's a daily struggle being in a sexless marriage. Had a girlfriend with whom I really connected with at first damn I saw stupid. She went to study abroad, but it was like three hours by bus, so it wasn't very far. We talked almost every day and it was pretty sweet. She told me to come by the cafe she surprise visited me last time she came back, so I was pumped. The moment I arrived and hugged her, I could sense the disingenuousness of her hug and kiss never understood how I got it. This was the second time she came back to the country. She just straight up started acting weird for the rest of the night, sitting very far away from me, small talk and just talking to some friends we had already in the cafe. We talked for a bit and I decided to take her back home. I was a bit anxious to talk to her and it was really awkward to talk somehow. Before she opened the door, we kissed and the feeling was again. Off. So I asked her what's wrong. She hesitantly and very slowly told me that she lost interest in me and didn't feel the love anymore. I felt my heart cracked sorry for the meme, but it really goes well here and asked her what was going on. She said that the distance cooled her down somehow and that she didn't want to drag me further. I thanked her for being honest, not knowing what was behind the actual reason. We greeted each other and I went home crying, listening to some sobby music along the way, and drank myself to sleep. We said that we were gonna at least stay friends. After about a month, we talked on Viber for the first time since that situation and she was talking to me about a weird sexual encounter she had while being drunk, but assured me that it happened after we broke up. I trusted her, like an idiot, and she explained that she had sex with a dude from her class, but it didn't turn out well because he couldn't come in her. So nothing happened after that. I told her just to be careful and not to have drunk sex with someone she barely knows. She thanked me for that and we never talk again after that. Pretty much ghosting me, so I just stopped talking. 
A couple of months passed and I pretty much got over that shit. She had a close friend that was very shy, but quite friendly once you get to know her. We talked about music, video games and a lot of cool projects surrounding different artistic froms, which was quite nice, so we stayed in touch after all of that. One day, the close friend called me up for coffee, because we haven't seen each other since the first time my ex left the country. We talked a while about the music thingies and fun stuff, but in a moment, when she asked me how I was holding up, I just said that, it's better now and at least she was being honest. The close friend stared at me in confusion and just murmured something along the lines of, not necessarily. I confront her about that and she said that she wanted to tell me before, but first wanted to get my ex off of her back they stopped talking after she went abroad. The close friend told me that my ex had been cheating on me while she was in another country with her roommate. I connected the dots and it's pretty much the same to her story. I asked the close friend for the name and it was the same dude. The close friend just said that she wanted to get that off of her chest and that I didn't deserve an asshole like that. Rarely anyone would do that for anyone, so that was pretty nice. We're friends now and we still talk frequently. Never confronted my ex about that, because she deleted pretty much all of her social media and I've lost her number. Still, nice knowing what actually happened. I knew she was cheating before I ever actually caught her, but like an idiot I didn't try to talk to her about it. Instead I sat, I stood, and I looked for evidence. I wanted to believe that none of it was real, that the woman I loved so much could not do this to me. It started off with subtle changes in her behavior, suddenly she was always making sure she was dressing nice, she started investing a lot in makeup and beauty products, when she came home from work she would always take a bath first thing, and suddenly she was smoking which she hadn't done for over 10 years. Those behaviors alone let me know, but the thing that would send me down a path of grueling detective work looking for evidence I didn't want to find, was me grabbing her phone to change the song in the car one day and her quickly snatching it back out of my hand. I knew right then and there, but like an idiot I stood and looked for hard evidence. Eventually I discovered a pretty big security flaw in Walgreens website that allowed me to find the evidence I was looking for. It turns out at the time, maybe still, if you had a Walgreens card but had never associated it to an online account, anyone could just create an account on the Walgreens website and associate that phone number and card to it. Even without having to verify you owned the phone. Once I did this I suddenly had access to see everything she had purchased using her Walgreens card. It didn't take much scrolling through the history to discover that she had purchased condoms, I've had a vasectomy, on multiple occasions. That was a Friday afternoon and even though I was at work I immediately got up from my desk and drove over to her workplace to confront her. When I walked in unexpected there was a look of shock on her face, which let me know that she was probably having an affair with someone in the office. I would later find out that the asshole he was also married she cheated on me with was her work partner that she shared an office with. I politely asked her if we could go out to the car and talk, and so we did. When we got to the car I showed her the condom purchases I had found on the website expecting her to come clean and for us to talk this out like adults. What happened next would send me on a downward spiral for years to come, and I still have not fully recovered. She just told me the condom purchases were for her friend. This was a stupid lie and I knew it wasn't true, but being the rational person I am I just dialed up her friend, put her on speakerphone, and figured we'd all talk this out. Her friend tried to cover for her and failed miserably because it was very obvious she had no idea when my wife would have ever purchased condoms for her. Even after her friend botched the cover story she still denied it. You see I thought it would just be over right after the confrontation, and that since I loved her we would just go to marriage counseling and eventually put this behind us. In reality she didn't want the affair to end, and that more than anything is what drove me into the pits of madness and despair. I know this is a very long answer, I can keep going on with this entire crazy story if anyone wants to hear it as it helps me to recount and process the darkness I still continue to battle. TLDR. You will most likely know if your partner is cheating on you before you, 
Find out, but even if they aren't and you just suspect they are something needs addressing in your relationship. I wish I had left her the second she denied it and then refused to participate in counseling. That would be my advice to anyone in this situation. Agree to counseling or seek legal counsel ASAP, especially if kids are involved.